Now, one of the most inspiring things that I've added to this office are these books. Now, I have a few more that are over there and I'll show you them in just a minute, but these books right here are by a company called Bitmap Books. And I wanted to share with you guys some of my favorite books that I have by them because frankly, I think that they're well worth it. Now, full disclosure, I did get a discount on a couple of them. I paid full price for a few of them and they sent me one as a gift. This one, PC Engine, the box art collection. Now, I'm not familiar at all with what a PC Engine is. To be honest with you, when they decided to send me this PC Engine book, I actually thought they were just sending me a book about PC gaming. I had no clue. Upon further discovery and looking through the book, it actually was a console, one that was released way long ago and kind of ahead of its time with a lot of 8-bit stuff and it was a Japanese release. I was a huge fan of going through this book because I'm learning and I think that's something that I really, really genuinely enjoy about this office that I'm creating is that it's the study. There are plenty of video game things in here. In fact, if you walked in here, you would know from the get-go that I am someone who plays video games. So hopping into a couple of my favorite books, I think my favorite book by Bitmap Books that is just out of this world is this guy right here. This giant behemoth, by far the biggest book that I have. It is a guide to Japanese role-playing games. This is a book that I'm trying to read cover to cover. It is huge, covering hundreds of games. And when it comes to the explanations of the games all the way up into the index, you got yourself 643 pages of wonderful, incredible synopses, facts, developer's notes, publisher's notes, huge spreads from articles. This book genuinely gives you the information, if you're looking for it, and the excitement that comes with being a fan of JRPGs. That's me. I absolutely love JRPGs. First person shooters, really not my cup of coffee. The Activision Blizzard deal, I couldn't care less because I don't care about Call of Duty or the games that Activision brings to the table nowadays. Maybe they're older stuff. I mean, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 is pretty cool, but the games that they're bringing to the table, kind of boring. Hopping into a couple others here, and we're going down the Nintendo road, and I purchased every single book they had on Nintendo products because I absolutely love Nintendo, as you guys know. A book that I thought was a must-have for me was this Game Boy Box Art Collection. With the Game Boy Box Art Collection, what you have is just, first off, the texture of the book is really nice. It's this nice kind of, uh, I, I, like the, the, the cloth-like texture, I don't know how to explain it. It's not just a bound book with a glossy cover. It, it's very, very well put together. These books are well worth their price tag. At any rate, uh, going through this, there is so much, from Japanese releases to the American releases, everything you can find is here. And by American release, I just mean westernized and English releases. You have everything you would want in a book about Game Boy games. Now, this isn't every single Game Boy game ever released. There are some that are here, there are some that aren't. The reason why they omit some is because if they had to have every single game in here, this book would be at least three times the size. So as it stands, it's already quite expansive in its library, but there are some holes. Now, going into some of the consoles down the line, they do have Super Nintendo and Nintendo. And so with the Super Nintendo, I got three books because the Super Nintendo was my very first console that I have. Also, they have three books on the Super Nintendo. They have the official SNES pixel art book. Now this is pretty cool because it comes in its own case, which is sick. But if you go through this book, you immediately are welcomed by pictures of games that I just like shot while jumping like look at this is this right here is from uh, Yoshi's Island a game that I loved on the Super Nintendo I loved it on the Super Nintendo and when I look at these pictures I get chills of excitement because I'm transported back oh my gosh Donkey Kong I'm transported back to a time that was so special and right now in video games we are really faced with some interesting realities. One is, of course, the console war between Xbox and PlayStation, especially in light of this uh, Activision Blizzard deal and just the, the tremendous amount of unnecessary name calling you get between people who enjoy playing games on Xbox and people who enjoy playing games on PlayStation. It's just obnoxious. And so when I look at this, I am transported back to a time that was so special 
Granted, I'm sure there were elements of that that existed back in the 90s, but as someone who was a child back then, this is really quite nice. Now, this right here is, is especially exciting because this is the Super Famicom uh, book that is the box art collection. Now, I didn't have a Super Famicom. Super Famicom, or the Super Family Computer, was the Japanese version of the Super Nintendo. And so this is going to have box art uh, of the actual Japanese versions of all the games with Japanese on the boxes, uh, as well as an explanation of the game, a little synopsis again, and just the beautiful, wonderful history that you would have in this system. And what I really enjoy about these books is that they inspire me to learn more about video game history and the exciting thing that was video game history. Now, I have to go and get two of my other books by them. These are two books that I just love. So we're gonna start with the NES or Famicom, a visual compendium. These books are like encyclopedias and it has a really cool cover that's textured. It also changes with the uh, direction of the light, but we're gonna take it out of its case. And as we flip through, it has its own, uh, I, I don't love these types of uh, <laughs> covers because I feel like they rip, especially when you have kids. But as you flip through these books, you're going to be given bo anything from box art to uh, full articles to uh, explanation in history, the reasons why these games existed, some of the troubles that happened in development. Everything that you would want to know about the NES and the uh, Famicom is here. Now, is it extensive? Yes. Is it all knowing and all inclusive? Of course not, right? This book is only about 500 pages. It's not gonna have everything. And they have one to match that is going to be for the Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom right here. And these right here, I tell you, these are just unreal. The Super Nintendo and Super Famicom visual, I, I have gone through this extensively already. And this is a book that I just sit in this chair, put on some lo-fi music, have my diffuser going, and I am taken back to a time that was just so special. And, and granted, I, I didn't play all these games. There's a great deal of games in here I didn't even know about or wasn't even interested in because I had, you know, five, seven games on my system at a time. So this is just quite special to go through. Now these books are from Bitmap Books. There is another publisher that I have here represented in this office as Dark Horse. They have a great collection of books all about Zelda. And so if we're gonna dive in to the books by Dark Horse, these, man, these, just get me all giddy inside because these are historic. These are books that teach me and again, take me into uh, the history of video games from some of my favorite consoles. And these books by Dark Horse transport me into a land that I am always learning about because I am obsessed with the Zelda franchise. It is my second favorite to Mario. But Mario has a <laughs> not really vast historic or even lore-based uh, world anyway. He's pretty, pretty cut and dry. Let's hop into a book that I think is visually uh, a great one to have in a collection. This right here is the uh, Encyclopedia, the Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia. This is the special edition, hard to find, really hard to find. What I like about this one is it resembles that. It comes with this nice cartridge case of a original, of the original NES cartridge and it looks just like the Legend of Zelda, right? This is what the NES cartridge looked like, but then it has Encyclopedia down here. And it has this gold on the side to maintain the gold throughout. And if you flip through this book, you're gonna notice all of the different things you would wanna know about Zelda. It's a full encyclopedia. Now, it omits Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was not released when this book came out. What you are gonna notice is stuff from Amiibos to uh, the archives, just different types of things. The database giving you different pictures of enemies that you had over the years from different games and different artistic renditions of those specific enemies. It's, it's quite special and I just like the way it looks on a shelf. Now I have flipped through this, but this isn't the one that I flipped through the most. In fact, the one that I flipped through the most is gonna be this guy right here. This is the Art in Artifacts book because this is going to be just one that you're looking at beautiful pictures and wonderful art. And now when I open this up, of course, Link's Awakening, because Link's Awakening is the one that's my first game ever. I've taken pictures, I've looked through this before. You're just getting pictures of, oh man, it's just, it's just so, so exciting. And when I see this, I'm inspired because it just it just reminds me of my love for video games. And again, I find uh, that in this most recent time of video games, it's nice to take a, a little trip back memory lane to remind you why you got involved. So this one is the Hyrule Historia. This one's for more of the fans of what 
the story is. This is the whole history of Hyrule, and you're gonna get everything from Fee to, uh, you know, the three timelines, and it explains to you what's going on in Zelda. And this book right here is gonna get you up to date with the lore. And again, another great book to have in the collection, but this one is definitely more for someone who is into learning about the world of Hyrule. Now, as I said, this goes up until Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild wasn't around when these books were published, so we were missing that whole lore. But they came out with Creating a Champion, which is all about Breath of the Wild. This right here is the book, and it's just the normal book, right? Right here, good to go. But they have a special edition one, which I just recently acquired that, let me tell you, is out of this world. So this is my first copy, and this is gonna be going to my Bash Brother Chase. You should listen to our podcast. This is the special edition. A beautiful blue, comes in this nice box case. The texture of the book is similar to that of the bitmap books. It's nice, it feels good. It's the exact same book though. There's nothing additional in here. But where the real magic comes is it does come with some extra stuff here. It's gonna be a map that is gonna be in this case here. And uh, this beautiful picture that reminds me of like a yearbook photo, but what's, uh, but, but again, this is not what I'm excited about with this box. This box has this little tiny compartment down here that, you know, you just look at and you're like, okay, of course, but what, what is going on there? You flip it down and it says, may the goddess smile upon you. And well, you know, when you hear or read, may the goddess smile upon you, what's next? An orb will be granted to you in Breath of the Wild. And exactly that is there. An orb. They have an orb for you right here in the box. Just the attention to detail is unmatched. And I tell you that this is the kind of stuff that excites me to no end because this is why I play video games. This right here, these worlds that exist are why I play video games. They excite me and they transport me to a time in my life that was so special and give me new memories now in 2023. And so when it comes to video games as a whole, looking at what is going on, I do not care at all about Activision Blizzard. I do not care at all about these giant, huge buyouts because the, at the end of the day, what matters is compelling stories and excitement around playing video games. So if you're on either end of the fence and you're rooting for one or the other to lose or to win, I encourage you to take a step back and to look into why you play video games. And really remember that this is an art form. This is a beautiful, wonderful art form that we get to interact with, and it's so special. And so these are just a few of the things that I enjoy to look at in my office. I have multiple books. I have artwork on the walls, mostly artwork. This right here is my wife's, it's her artwork. And that's what I keep in this office. As this office in the study, sorry, the study grows, I will show you more and more about it. But remember, when it comes to video games, we, are interacting with art. And that is the number one most important thing to remember when you are getting involved or getting excited about video games. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. As always, happy gaming.